Hello and welcome to It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. This is where you can watch or listen to a late night show, either on, you can be listening on a podcast, you could be listening on Veritas's app, you could be listening on the radio at 1350 if you're in Long Island in Connecticut. You can watch on YouTube, you can watch on Facebook. I sound like a Dr. Seuss book, which is great, because you know what we're going to focus on today? <laughs> we're actually going to focus on children's literature, okay? So you can watch me in a boat, in a sea, with a guy who looks like me. Anyway, so that's why I don't write children's literature. I did, however, get my degree in human development. Most people don't know that. Not only did I do that, but I went ahead and got a post baccalaureate. Is that how you say that? I can't ever spell that word. Post baccalaureate in early childhood. That is a fancy way of saying I have a I have an undergraduate degree. I'm going to keep taking classes and not get a master's or a doctorate or like anything. I just get to take classes. That's what that means. That's it. It's very it's a big long word for no reason. However, when I was getting my human development degree, this is one of my favorite stories from college. I went to Texas Texas Tech University, which everybody knows, it's in Lubbock. And I, <laughs> I felt really bad. My husband was getting his degree in marketing. It was a business degree. It is a business degree, right? It still is. He had really hard classes. He had like, I don't know, pre-cal. That seems hard. He had like accounting and I, whatever they do at business school. He had all these super hard classes. I walk in one time. This is absolutely true. Human development, family studies. My emphasis was family studies. No, my emphasis was human development. <laughs> They're going to want this degree back. I'm <laughs> not supposed to cut in this early, but I have so many questions. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is great. You don't know how to say the name of your degree. I don't. <laughs> You're like, hey, I keep going to class and dropping out. <laughs> and the kicker, oh my I studied gosh. human development. Where's the evidence? <laughs> I think daily my parents are like, and if we could write them and ask for a check back, that would be great. Not only am I not using my degree, but obviously I came and like function as a normal person in it's life. It's kind of like that Christian thing. Where it's like, oh, well, no, they're Christians by their fruits. <laughs> So we're like, where are the fruits of this degree that you supposedly gave this woman? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, if I'm ever up for a job teaching, people will be like, well, we were going to hire. And then we saw this uh, clip. No one's who's watching this clip. My mother, your mother, maybe. Your mom does like me. Um, oh God, that's funny. Okay. Human development and family studies. My emphasis was on human development. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> This I know you are a huge fan of Texas Tech. This is not shedding good light on your alma mater. I'm not really a huge fan of Texas Tech. I love tech. I feel bad for tech, but you know, I it's a university. It's fine. Whatevs. I don't want my kids to go there, which I've said. Um, unless it really has something that they're specialized in. Why are we talking about this? Let me tell you about this degree. Listen to two seconds, Taylor. It was finals, okay? And I shockingly did not study for finals ever, okay? Until kind of towards the end-ish parts of my career at school, which I will share about that at another time. Um, but I had this final, it was a human development final, which again, how hard is that, right? It's child development, it's later adulthood, it's like all these kinds of things. Nathan had these really difficult finals. Like he was like stressed, he would cry. He didn't really cry. He would sweat, that's probably true. Like it was really a stressful time for him. Here's why I love finals in college. And then I'll get to the great story about this thing. When I was in school back in the 1800s, <laughs> Taylor's going to make some joke. That, that's why you can't pronounce it. The <laughs> pronunciation has changed since you were in school. We used to say things in old English. <laughs> Germanic. That's the English you know. Germanic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we were on the prairie and I was at college, um, <laughs> 
Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes. The cafeteria at the dorm where like kids now they have like food courts. OK, it's like it's like the flipping Galleria down there. But back in the day, we had like legit lunch ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. There were always women, but, you know, lunch women. And we would have like these great meals and stuff. But during finals, they would only make grilled cheese and tater tots. And that was all we would get. And it was so cool. And so we would all come down in our pajamas and we would eat grilled cheese and tater tots. And let's all remember I was chunky. So my inner chunky gal was like, heck yeah, <laughs> grilled cheese and tater tots all day. And then we had those waffle makers, you know, like where you could pour the waffle thing, like at the Hampton Inn, <laughs> we would like do that. But here's the best part. They would project with a projector, not a VCR, not a CD, no, not a DVD. <laughs> I don't know. Don't. I'm just going to cut in and say I'm loving how this show is going so far. This is my favorite episode thus far. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Whatever. It was like a flip, 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 flip. Like it was one of those flip, flip, flip. <laughs> yeah. Good college definition. You're really using that degree to explain I, things to us. Well. I wasn't a film major. That's how the, the, the chef, what is he? The whatever chef and the Muppets, the Swedish chef. Blip, 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 blip. Okay. So it was one of those and a projector and they would project old Bugs Bunny cartoons. So uh, Roadrunner or uh, Wile E. Coyote and uh, people you don't even know. You're like an infant. Well, you're like the new episodes as they were coming no, out. No, <laughs> not the new ones. The classics were That's Bugs. That's my point. The classics were new <laughs> back then. <laughs> Dang it. I didn't hear it. So yeah, so we're eating grilled cheese, tater tots, and watching old Warner Brothers, okay? Not new ones, Taylor, okay? It was not the, the 1800s. Second brother Warner had just been born. <laughs> Did you grow up watching Animaniacs, by the way? Animaniacs. Oh, it's the best show ever. Okay, we're going to have to I mean, go. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, are you kidding Best show ever. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. You are the worst. You are like, uh, engineers can't stand me because I say things like that. And then they're like, you have been alive. You oh, weren't alive in the 1800s. Engineers. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> engineers and Taylor are like, uh, you speak too broadly. Correct. Okay. Yes. That's, that's the list. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Engineers and Taylor. That's the short end of the list. I don't know what I'm saying at this point. Anyway, Taylor, it's finals. I mean, my grilled cheese, my tater tots, and watching my cartoons. Okay, greatest week of my life. I love finals. I walk in to, it was a, uh, tell me if I say this word correctly. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say no. <laughs> <laughs> Cumulative? Uh, uh, that was better than baccalaureate. <laughs> I'm a trophy wife, Taylor. Okay, guys, I'm not. It's a joke. Uh, cumulative of the entire semester of human development. So it was like day one, August, when they gave us the syllabus, which I didn't know what the word syllabus meant. <laughs> every year it caught me off guard. I was like, what? Syllabus? What is this? Anyway, every year I didn't know what that word was. And so syllabus comes out, whatever. And so this was supposed to be the big exam, right? For the whole semester. And I walk in and on the desk, every single desk has a coffee, an orange juice, and a croissant sandwich from Burger King. And all the desks were in a circle. Like we had the desk like high school where like it was a chair that had like the desk connected, you know? It was like one of those like chair desk situations. Do you have any watching? Yep. We're, we're with you on this one. You are, you are stopping because you think we have a problem. We don't. You're doing great now. You're really you get your bearings going. Okay. So it's all those onesies. It's a onesie desk. They're not called onesies. <laughs> Golly. I, I complimented you, and this I is couldn't how you handle it. Me. I couldn't handle it. I didn't you know what to do. You were doing good. Hey, you know those onesies <laughs> that we sat in at school? <laughs> I didn't know how to handle it. I was like, what do I do? He said something nice. So anyway, we're sitting in these in a circle. Oh, and the little cute little hash browns that Burger King has, little disc ones. And... Um, the teacher, our professor, I don't know if they were a professor. I never really understood that whole thing. But anyway, there was like a stack of like finals. <laughs> I, I thought you were looking for the word books and I was going to be so sad for you. <laughs> I literally was trying to say the word final. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do during finals week? What is that thing you do? 
has something to do with <laughs> finality. Oh my gosh, you guys. We're not this is the most Monday Tuesday I've ever had in my life. Mm. Monday, Tuesday. Monday, that's, that's Tuesday, what, uh, that's, Wednesday. That's like a, right around the, uh, Holy Week. They call it Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yeah, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> We're just prepping for Lent. So, right. The professor person had all these stacks of finals, and they were huge. Like, they were really thick, like, stapled, kind of, you know, not collaborated. What is that called whenever you... Just move on. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, so the whole time he's asking us questions like, so Taylor, what did you get out of this year? What did you learn this semester? You know, and you would answer and then like whatever, whatever. And he just had his hand on the finals the entire time. And he's like, go ahead guys, eat your sandwiches, eat your, your tater tot, whatever they were, hash browns, have your coffee, have your juice. And I'm like, okay. And we were so nervous because he had told us how like scary this final was going to be, how it was going to have absolutely everything on it. And he just had his hand on it the whole time. And then at the very end, like an hour into it, after we all shared our feelings, we literally shared our feelings. We literally shared what we learned through the year, what we got out of it, like all this kind of stuff. He goes, everyone in here gets a 100. You guys are all fantastic people. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you don't understand anything about college. You can't say the degree you have. You're not sure what you studied. Because Texas Tech literally taught you nothing. They were like, how do you feel right now? And that's all that mattered. I am so upset on behalf of your parents that they paid for you to go to this school to do nothing. I knew you were going to love this story. Nathan was furious. He was so furious because not only did I not study for this cumulative final that was supposed to kill me, right? They were actually there. And all I got was a croissant sandwich and a free 100. <laughs> and he was like, I live under, you hate this about me. I do. This, I live under a rainbow of unicorns. Led to many of the issues that you have shared about <laughs> in the past few years. <laughs> this is why I never learn. <laughs> Because my life is in a rainbow. And Nathan is Eeyore, and he lives in a little black rain cloud. And not only did he, like, totally fail, but uh, he's fine. He he has a job. But so wait, uh, wait, wait. If he's Eeyore, who are you saying I'm Tigger. Are? I'm Tigger. Tigger. Everybody knows that. Come on. Out of the Winnie the Pooh characters, Tigger, who's such a spaz, and he bounces all the time. Like, okay, I think I, th I can see that that's, like, the most obvious one. Oh. But I... I think behind the scenes, you were very rabbit. Really? Yeah. I don't know how to process that. Rabbit's mean. I'm not mean. <laughs> oh, Taylor! <laughs> you did that. He likes reactionary abuse. Taylor loves to say things, so I react. Because he knows I will, good or bad. I am not rabbit. Rabbit's also really, really smart. Kind of sad and smart. <laughs> hey, I'm not that smart. <laughs> well... No one was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Kanga and Rue. I always thought they were really, really cute. I could see being Piglet. Piglet's always scared of everything. Oh, you know? no, 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 no. Oh, Pooh. Oh, no. Also, it's raining. We have to go inside right. the shelter. Exactly. And then there's Wayne the Pooh who's like, let's just sit down and eat some honey, y'all. <laughs> like, let's just get in there. Well. Get chunky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so once again, Liv is all of the characters. <laughs> you know that show about all the things that can be wrong with a person? This is Liv it. Is most of them. This is the show. <laughs> Oh, this is that show. Boy, I'm really glad we hired Taylor. This you know who is who I am? Uh, oh. To you? If you are all these people, then that makes me the one. Christopher person. Robin? Christopher I'm Robin. <laughs> you would wear those shorts. <laughs> and with that, we will it's be. Not that <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with our guest and uh, maybe Taylor Schroll. <laughs> you guys are tuned into It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. Hey, welcome back to It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. And I am with a fellow Texan, which is kind of exciting. But you know what's great about both of us? We both have Italian roots. So there's something about these Texan Italians that I love so much. I'm talking about one of the brothers, which I always have heard of these guys as the brothers. They sound like the mafia of the Catholic Church. But I, today I've got the smarter of the two, let's be honest, right? And the better looking one. For sure the better right? looking He's one. Not, the other one's not going to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> I've got Anthony D'Ambrosio. Yes? Yes. Yes. You nailed, nailed it. it. You nailed it. Yes. Nailed it. Thank you, Liv. Thank okay. you so much for having me. 
Anthony, I'm so excited. I mean, we have known each other through social media for who knows how long since they invented it. Not really that long. Um, <laughs> but you started a little tiny little thing called Catholic Creatives, or that's how I know. I think you invented it. I don't know if that's true. Just say yes. Yes. Because. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. I mean, and you invented the Catholic creativity. Church. Yeah. I mean, no one was Catholic <laughs> and creative before me. So, uh, didn't exist. <laughs> didn't exist. Didn't yeah. exist. <laughs> you were the guy. You were basically Steve Jobs to all the Catholics. Oh my gosh. Um, so, yeah. No, I don't know. But that's how I know you. you. You guys would have like a summit situation, and I signed up and I was ready to go. And then March 2020 happened. Yes. And all the dreams faded away. All the dreams. <laughs> so many dreams. So, I've left. Never, <laughs> so many so dreams. Many, that was my dream. <laughs> I peaked and it's over. Yeah, you dream, are now on the downside of my life. Oh my gosh. My dream was to have you and to actually get to meet in person. And uh and then this is, now now yeah. everything's remote. So kind of And now everything's way. remote. Yeah. But now you're in Austin, so we could actually we got to like, at some point, every time I have someone in Austin, I always say, so can we meet at Kirby Lane and get queso? And like, could I be more basic? Yes. But we, we could go just, to a taco truck and do the interview next That's time. fine. Yeah. I'm not mad about it. So Anthony, I have to know your whole story, Catholic creatives and everything that you are. I would like to think you're a creative guy. Do you can, do you identify? Cause this is 2021. You can, <laughs> you can. it's not that late. Yeah. Do you identify <laughs> as a creative person? I, I identify as a creative person. I would say so. Yes. I wish, I wish that, um, I had, I had, I, it, this is actually kind of funny. I feel like Catholic creatives is sort of like my effort to like even commit to that myself because it was so, so foreign and strange, uh, to me to like own that identity. But uh, I'm a recovering creative. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> a recovering creative. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of love that. <laughs> and you had a family business. I mean, you worked with your brother, right? Is it just the two of you? Or were you, is it? Is that it for the siblings? Is it just There's five the of the brothers? Us. So my, my brother. Five? We don't like the other three. I don't, yeah, I'm just we kidding. don't talk about them. The, <laughs> we don't we talk have, about them. I don't, yeah, no. Um, I have an identical twin <laughs> brother. Uh, we would obviously switch on everybody that we could possibly play jokes on uh, with that. But uh, then there's, there's three others. And uh, my brother and I are the oldest. He beat me out by a minute. Uh, so he got the family name and fortune and all of that. And he's the fifth in the line of Marcellino Giovanni Michele D'Ambrosios. Uh, and I am the first. I just say that I'm, you know. Anthony. Yeah, I'm Anthony, <laughs> the first of my line. <laughs> I'm exhausted for your brother. Like, I'm like, that is so many letters. I don't know what to do with I think that. He's, I think he's proud of it. I think... I think he's like, I, more the you got to, <laughs> there's two ways to go. You either own that or you just, or you, you move, or you, get, yeah, you, just you, collapse. Move, yeah. you move to Canada. I don't know. Italy, I guess, that's where, it. Where that's normal. Those are your, I, maybe <laughs> those are your choices. So, okay. So here you are. You're this creative. What's creative about you? I want to know. I don't know. Like, what is, what do you bring to the table? Are you a Broadway singer? Can you dance? Are you an artist? What, where do you hear that? Because here's the thing. I consider myself a creative and I've got an 18 year old and he loves to tell me I'm not an artist. He's like, you're not an artist. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I am an artist. You know? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> We've got to like, really, I've got to work. I got to get introduced to your son so we can like exchange philosophies on what the definition You'll love is, this kid but, uh, actually. He's a cool kid. Yeah. Like he, yeah. So I need you Sounds really bold. what I'm using you for. <laughs> how do I talk to my kid? What do I say? Like, how do I go back out there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that there's a difference between creative and artist. I, uh, and I, I make a definition there because I think sometimes like you can commit to being a professional artist and make that your like your craft and really become an artist at whatever it is you know your craft that you, that your your medium that you're going after. But I think that creativity is the birthright and inheritance that all of us have as uh, being made in the image and likeness of God. Uh, so the first thing that God did was it create, and we're made in His image, and that means that we are made as as creatives with that inheritance. Um, and the Holy Spirit in us is, is, comes out of us in creativity. It's sort of how we respond to God as partnering with him. So I found that, um, that sort of sense of creativity in drawing when I was growing up and stories, um, in dance, I was like a theater kid. 
uh, in band in high, high school. And I was in a, a rock and roll punk, like emo band when I was in high school. Um, and since then I've, I've done lots of things like branding and poetry and, uh, lots of other, you've done it all. Creative, You're so. a Renaissance man. Uh, that's, You're basically Shakespeare. That's the dream. <laughs> that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm in fashion just, design. Just I'm on project runway. In yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in, t- I'm on top chef. Like I, basically your reality TV for Catholics. Like, I just want you to have a vlog and it's like, what, what is Anthony doing this week? And you could just be like making pottery. I don't know. I think that would be kind of fun. You know, it's really funny. I, I actually did a vlog for the first time in my life during COVID, you know, when everybody is like, uh, it's like, well, how else? Everybody's doing vlogs now. It's the only way to communicate Everyone. with the world. But I decided so, to become a pro boxer a for, uh, for a season. I did like uh, pro boxing for about uh seven months and did a vlog about that what so that was my (laughs) like you like are you for real you actually did pro boxing yeah yeah so what Uh, does that mean did you pay them or did they pay you like what uh, is that is it both i mean uh yeah i paid a lot more than i got paid let's we can say that (laughs) i love that um my first thought was to think of the friends episodes when Monica is dating the billionaire and he decides to leave her to become a pro boxer. And I can't think of his name. John Favreau played that part, but whatever, that's who you are now to me. You are now a, a uh, billionaire pro boxer. Yeah. That is the only way I will now refer to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh... that's so great. So what did you learn from boxing? I feel like there's a lot of lessons. Like, I feel like this could get deep. I feel like we're about to go profound. We're, what we did we learn? Profound. What did we learn about? Have you ever been in a fight? From boxing. Yeah, what was revealed to you? Well, in the boxing, I, I will share. Have season. you have you ever been in a fight? An actual fight? Yeah, I mean, I have three fight. brothers. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they, I didn't. I was awful. No, I I used to like. I was so awful. Why are you bringing this up, Anthony? And did my mom call you? Like, what is? <laughs> Well, I'm about to get on a couch and start crying. Well, you're going uh, to No, you're I've never been in a real fight. Okay. Yeah. I just want to yeah, know, I know what, what you our, learned what our baseline in this season. I have nothing. <laughs> no, I have nothing in boxing. I don't know anything about boxing. I mean, I've seen it, mm-hmm. but I didn't, but I could, I could see where there would be some pretty deep lessons though in boxing. I mean, I appreciate Rocky. Yeah. So it sounds you know, like, it sounds anyway. like you, you should go to a gym and uh, it sounds like you kind of want to, <laughs> like you're like, the, there's something really cool about this. There's an attraction I'm feeling. You should, you should join a there gym. There is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This goes back to Allison Sullivan. Everybody knows I like adore her and she boxes. I and can that. I tell you what is really cool? What? Her arms are like amazing. She could definitely wear that shirt that says, welcome to the gun show. Oh, you know, nice. like she could pull that off. Yeah. I, I can't <laughs> pull that shirt off, but, uh, um, you know, small, but mighty. I, uh, okay. I guess I would say, uh, so I started boxing in, in seminary. So I went to seminary for a little while. I was studying to be a priest and, um, this is while I was in college and, uh, I was going through a lot of, a lot of things at that time and detoxing from a lot of the, the bad things that I did when I was in a punk rock band. Um, and like my demons, you know, were kind of all coming up. And one of the seminarians had been a golden glove boxer and he saw that I was like not adjusting well, that I had a chip on my shoulder. And he was like, Hey man, like, I think that this would be a really good thing to sort of teach you about yourself and about the world and kind of help you find your confidence. Um, and he ended up helping to start this whole underground fight club in the seminary that was like uh, a pretty cool experience. But he trained me. And one of the massive lessons that I learned was that uh, I could take a punch, which is, uh, I think, somebody something that everybody should should experience at some point so they can, they can know uh, their metal. Really? But uh, yeah, there's amazing, amazing lessons like I realized that. No, I really think that there would be. Yes. And so obviously this man was Edward Norton. Yes. And your actual name is Brad Pitt. So <laughs> this is fascinating. And we were the same Wow, person. you guys, this show has really made it. I've really made it. This is. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So you even think women should be able to take a punch? I don't know, yeah. Anthony. This is kind of. Huh. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that it's. Yeah. It's, well, you, you get to face something in your own fears when you do that. And then you realize that it, it's not as bad as you're, you think. And then there's a certain okay. just kind of like confidence that you have that you know that you can 
that you can face your fears. So yeah, I'm actually a very high anxiety person. Like I have struggled with anxiety my whole life um, and depression and, you know, lots of things that kind of come with the whole creative, like, you know, mental yep. thing. And so, uh, yeah, boxing has been a way for me to really discover my own body, to discover what it's like to face fears and um, to be calm and collected and relaxed in the midst of that. Um, and yeah, to come forward and, and not like back away anytime that I'm in conflict, lots of like basic lessons about human relationships that, uh, I don't think I that love I really it. got to learn in, uh, in, in philosophy class. So uh. <laughs> this was the human experience. Well, and I'm glad that you brought up mental health because as a creative, I'm, I'm, I'm very, um, obviously not an artist. I can't say that anymore. You just proved my kid, right. <laughs> but, um, I struggle with, well, I, I'm very open about my anxiety, depression. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with extremely severe anxiety and was bedridden for three years. Wow. Couldn't fly an airplane for 15. Wow. And the depression is major depression. Wow. So I'm pretty open about it because there's not a lot, especially as Catholics, you hear a lot of people say, well, oh, you should just pray the rosary more mm -hmm. or you just don't love Jesus enough. And I always say like, that's interesting <laughs> because if I was in the hospital with two broken legs, you wouldn't say, oh, you just obviously didn't like Mary. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's why you broke your legs. <laughs> but we had this disconnect. So I think it's interesting that you're talking about a mental connection with something physical like boxing, you know, and that everything is so connected. You know, people want it so in these boxes, like your spiritual life is here, your mental health is here, your physical health is here. But in your like experience, do you find that they are all, all connected and that it is, it's not as simple as people want to make it not as black and white. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, the first time I got into a sparring match, like with some of the other real fighters in the, in the gym, uh, I, the, the coaches were watching me every time somebody came forward and came at me, uh, and threw a punch, like it didn't know ma matter what it was like small jab. I would just like, yeah. I would back up to the back of the ring. And I would come forward really yeah. fast, but I would jump back like it was like the end of the world. And I watched the videos of myself and I was just like, these, these coaches, these like really like just salt of the earth coaches know more about me from watching me do this than like so many of my friends that are Catholic that I go to mass with or that I talk to. Like they're able to see the depths of like what's actually going on in, in like my reactions to things and how I deal with life. And they were able to speak into that. They're like, say, Anthony, you, you need to calm down, man. Like you, you need to relax. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know that. I we're going to punch you in the face yeah. and that's going to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here we go for a neck punch. Yeah. No, I think that makes a lot of sense though. And obviously this naturally segues perfectly so smooth into you being a children's book writer so this is <laughs> this is the really crazy thing about about you i'm actually about excited for this bridge connected but um i think that creativity is about trying to make things physical that are internal realities it's like you are experiencing something you see something you know something you feel something that comes from god or from your relationships and you want to make it you you want to embody that in some way and that's what creativity is. So in, in boxing, it's like I'm trying to get into my body to, to pass over this whole sort of barrier between my soul and the internal world and, and the physical world around me. But I think that writing and making illustrations and uh, making a book, it's actually a lot of the same kind of thing, taking something and making it real. Uh, and so... Yeah, actually, boxing was a very big, important part of the process because I didn't believe that I could actually be an author. Um, and I was deeply afraid of the risks uh, monetarily and of like the vulnerability that it requires. Uh, and so boxing actually was setting the stage for helping me, you know, own that new um, this new season in my life of being a, a children's book author. I love that. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's super rad. What is the name of your new children's book and when is it coming out? Because Christmas is coming and you're, I don't know if you've heard, there's like a supply problem. Um, yes. so I need to get on this. If I, I have 16 godchildren, so I want to buy all the 16, books. 16, you need 16 of them at least. Uh, no, at, I, least. <laughs> uh, I, at least, at least Taylor's yes. got kids. I got to send, I don't know if you have kids, I'll send kid your kids books. Uh, yeah. Nephews, nieces, whatever. Amazing. 
So it's called Beekle and the Star Stone, and it's a playful retelling of the parable of the treasure in the field uh, or the Pearl of Great Price. Uh, so, but with birds and on a jungle island called Falafel Island. That's it. I love falafel. Yeah, I know. Me too. I, it, and it's, it's more fun to say than it is to even eat. It is uh, so fun to say. <laughs> like, who doesn't want to buy treasure on Falafel yeah, Island? Exactly. Like, yeah. And now I'm hungry. Like, I think it should come with, like, like, a $5, like, gift card to Grubhub. Like, I feel like you should do, like, a like a partnership. Like, you could get the book delivered with a falafel. Like, yeah. I think that that, you need to think bigger. I, I will. Like. <laughs> I, I, you're a genius. You want to be on my team? <laughs> I mean, I'm available. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you gold right now. Like there's been so many amazing So much ideas. gold. <laughs> so much. I am an artist. Anyway, uh, that's fantastic. Here's what I want to do. I want to take a little break. I want to come back and play a game with you that is going to uh, deal with children's books. And I'll get into that when we come back. But will you come back and, and do something in that genre with me I'm, I'm when we ready. return? I'm ready. Okay. Fantastic. You guys, if you are tuned in to 1350 AM on Veritas or on their app, or if you're listening on a podcast, or if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, do not go anywhere. You are tuned into It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. Welcome back to It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison and my amazing guest, Anthony D'Ambrosio, because it's not that late. We can say damn when it's part of D'Ambrosio. That's right. Anyway, <laughs> so Anthony was here telling us about all of his incredible endeavors that he's done. He's done all the things. He's the last Renaissance man, the only one left in the Catholic Church. He's going to have to move to Greece and 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 not wear shirts and, and be one of those white houses that with the blue. I don't know. <laughs> Um, that's, that's, that's a, on a sailboat. <laughs> you know? I'm just making up your life. <laughs> You're I just want you to do these things for me. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> You're my life coach. <laughs> This is great. Yeah. This is working out so well. So, um, so he now has a pilgrimage in Greece that I just booked him for, <laughs> but he's doing all these things. He boxed, he ran Catholic creatives. These are real things that he did. Uh, he was in theater. He did all of this, but now he's a children's book author and he's going to be starting a campaign so that I can go to print. What is fascinating is I've got some children's books in print. Oh, this is so fascinating. They do it. It does exist. <laughs> and what I shared with Anthony earlier is he didn't know this, and you guys might not know this. My degree was actually human development. That's what I got my, my um, undergrad in. But I have a post baccalaureate in early childhood. I'm 12 hours away from a master's in early childhood, Whoa. which no one cares. I care. No one cares. <laughs> it's not I a big deal. I think this is awesome. I, I taught kindergarten okay everybody i was a kindergarten teacher which i'm sure most of you think that makes sense i i too ate paste okay so um <laughs> anyway just kidding <laughs> but i have a love for children's lit it was my favorite and this is true anthony i'm not kissing up to you i will i will still buy your book you don't have to send me a free copy i don't have to i we don't have to do this <laughs> I will buy your book. Okay, everybody, I'm in. I'm in for 20 copies. I'm making a commitment right now. When you start a Kickstarter or, or start or whatever, you can know Liv Harrison is putting, I'm buying 20, okay? So now I want everybody else to do something. But here's the deal. I love Children's Lit. It was my favorite class of any class I've taken in college. I've done master's classes wow. twice. Not kind of the post specular I've never gotten a master's. So I'm going to read an expert. Ex Expert? Excerpt. That's not how that works. An excerpt <laughs> from books. And I want to see if you know these oh books as well gosh. as I do. This is going to be so horrible. <laughs> this is going to be so fantastic. I can get a master's guys, in this. <laughs> they're so excited. Oh, I'm showing you the, I'm showing it to you because here's the thing. My radio listeners and my, my audio listeners, they love it when I do FDR fireside chats. <laughs> 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 They're so excited to listen to this. So I'm going to read this to you and see if you know this book. Mm. Mr. Prim read the note, please be kind to my crocodile. He is the most gentle of creatures and would not harm a flea. Do you happen to know what famous children's book? And I had to look up how to say the author's name, to be honest. It is one of my favorites. And if you don't, it's okay. Any clues? Uh, uh, We're gonna have to call his mom. So, She's yeah. gonna have to start. Phone, phone a friend. Can we phone a friend? 
This is the house on East 88th Street, which I would have also mm. taken Lyle the Crocodile, mm. which is by Bernard Waber. Mm. Waber? Waber? Mm. Sure. I don't think I've One read of the best. Name. You never read Lyle the Crocodile? No. All right, I'm going to have to read you from this one. I hope everybody's playing along at home. This I actually say to my children all the time. I quote this. This is like Tommy Boy in our house. Oh, okay, wow. this is a quotable okay. book. You know? Okay. Take him, said my mother. Take him, said my father. But Reggie will laugh, I said. He'll say I'm a baby. He won't laugh, said my mother. He won't laugh, said my father. He'll laugh, said my sister. Any clue at all? We do that all the time. I always say, like, he'll laugh, said my sister. <laughs> uh, is it Ira sleeps over? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> I've read Ira it. sleeps over. <laughs> and that's the same author. So just so you know, the guy that wrote the Lyle the Crocodile. And series Lyle, also Lyle wrote the Crocodile the Ira is even more famous than Ira Sleeps Over, but I haven't I didn't read the first one. So yeah, I I guess that's I'm that's excited. Situation. Look okay. at that. You knew this. One, you knew one this. Out okay. Of two. <laughs> one out of you're gonna crush it. You're gonna crush it. Okay. Here we go. Okay. This is a classic, and it's for little girls. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a sister or daughters? I don't even know if you. I, like, have, I don't even I know. Have you have two little sisters, girls, um, but two sisters. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll remember okay. this. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. In the middle of one night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, "Something is not right." Oh my god! It's a rhyming. Book. I know this one. Oh no, Miss Clavel. Oh, I can read no. the next page, and you might know. Um, can I get? Can I get another? Another? Yeah. You want another page? One more page? Yes. Little Madeline sat in bed, cried and cried. Her eyes were red, and soon after Dr. Cohn came, he rushed out to the phone. Uh, kind of gave it away. What? Yes. Uh, um, Madeline. Madeline. Yeah. <laughs> Madeline. I, I was like, Madel Madeline? Madeline? Madeline. Yeah. And two straight lines, because as that's how you know how to the, say it. Yeah, as soon as you hear it. Because the it says the little girls were in two straight lines. Okay, I'm going to read. Oh, God, this is making me so happy. I'm going to read. Um, wait, just like two more, two more. Oh, this is the best. This is the best. They just went into a film. So I feel like you have a chance. Okay, I have a chance. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. Is this Ferdinand? Oh, I have goosebumps. Ferdinand. Yeah! <laughs> Ferdinand, you got it. See, I believe in you and your childhood. Okay, now as an Italian, if you don't get this, you're gonna have to turn oh, in your card. No. Italy's gonna call you, and and I I picked this out especially this part especially for you. Here's why. Are you ready? Is this Fregonona? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Stragonona. <laughs> All you had to do was say, I picked this because you're Italian. And I'm like, what's the only one I know about pasta? <laughs> Big Anthony. <laughs> I love Big Anthony. Okay, so I claim to fame. I'm not kidding. All the years that I was a teacher, friends, like other teachers would bring their students in for me to read Stragonona because I do a lot of voices. And and my my audience is starting to hear a lot of my voices. I haven't done okay, all of them. You have a lot to of read characters. the excerpt now. You have to read the excerpt now oh, in your voices. Oh, jeez. No, I can't. <laughs> I have to get in it. I have to get in it. You I have to get in it. it. You're in it right now. No fear. I'll do it. No fear. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, this read is it so before. weird. We're almost out of time. We're almost out of time. I have one left. I have one left. Okay. This one but I will. I need to read Shaganona. I miss it because I, I would get on the all air. You need to read it. it on the air. I really do. I really do. That should be like my Christmas book to everybody. What if what if one of the okay, rewards ready? for a Kickstarter was you read with I think me it a part of our book and you did some of the some of the voices? I could totally do voices. Okay. Let's I could. do it. And I have wigs. <laughs> I mean, I'm in. I already bought 20 copies. I think I basically am a shareholder. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know. I mean, yeah, your voice should Wait, be we in. don't even... I'm Simon Schurz. <laughs> I, need to put you I can't even book. say that name. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. Last one. And this one is for me. Let's see if you okay. know this. This came out when I was in college, so you were probably like, I don't know, an embryo. But when I was in college... Um, 
this series came out, my friends would buy me one of the books every single year. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I want to say that I identify as this character. I'm okay with what animal they made her. I've made peace with it. And it is a biopic. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. Today is Olivia's turn to tell the class about her vacation. Olivia always blossoms in front of an audience. <laughs> I don't know this one. Freaking love this book. I have never read it. Yeah, this one is. Um, we are the same human. Oh my okay, gosh. it's fine that she's a pig. It's fine. I'm okay with it. But she loves to be on stage. She loves to have a mic. She loves to have a spotlight. She tells big stories. Mm. I love this character. Wow. Anyway, so you I need to crushed pick it, up. it. How do you feel about yourself? These are your colleagues. Was this was this a. Uh... What was that? That was like that was fifty percent success rate, I think. So <laughs> I feel like it was ninety. I feel like you got an A. Okay, yeah. You're and since very I'm nice your creator. publisher, I think we get to say whatever I want. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, well, I you could, did great. It was educational. It was definitely educational. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Anthony. I want everybody to know where can they find you? Where the can they find you? Where they where can they support your creative? projects where can they buy the book tell them all the things i want them to know all absolutely. of it absolutely yeah beaglebook.com is the place to uh find the book and keep tabs on the project so that's how to get to know me um and then if you want to read my poetry at the dambro uh on instagram you can see it there perfect yeah i want to thank you so much i next time you're in houston you got to come hang out with us it has been an absolute blast. I want to thank you for being here, Anthony. We are cheering you on. We are supporting you. As I said, I've committed to 20 books, you guys. So make sure that you're checking this out and supporting another amazing creative person on the planet who's trying to do good in the world in a fun way. So Anthony, thank you so much. Everybody who is listening and watching, don't go anywhere. You're tuned into It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. Liv, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Kaden's Corner. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a review on the new Cinderella movie. Yay! Um, so, I this is literally like my number one thing. I love the songs. Like, I am literally obsessed. I, ha I have the soundtrack on my phone. And I listened to it like I had been listening to it constantly. I just watched Cinderella uh, yesterday. I watched like half of it in a while before I watched the other half. So I'm I'm I love it. I've watched it like two times and I've listened to the music constantly. So that is my favorite thing about Cinderella. The costumes those are really cool. I love all her dresses. Like, I love Ella's dresses. They're really cool. Um, I think they're fun, and they kind of, like, resemble herself. And I really like the brooch that she used. Like, all those costumes. Oh, my gosh. They're really cool. Um, My favorite character. Oh. Honestly, it's between Ella... And the prince. Like, the two main characters, of course. Oh, no. It's between Ella, the prince, and Gwen. Oh, my gosh. Gwen, she has, like, all these great ideas. And her dad's like, Gwen, go away. And she's like, how about we talk of the state of the economy and how I can help it? And he's like, never. And I'm like... Literally, she would be a better queen than you or a king. Um, the prince, uh, dreamy prince. Oh my gosh, my prince charming. Um, also, just like really nice guy. Uh, he helps Ella whenever he can, and literally finds this peasant girl, and which is Ella. And just falls in love with her and literally gives up being king to marry her. I mean, come on. What's a better guy than him? I mean, maybe my father, but. <laughs> um, 
And then Ella, I mean, she's Cinderella. She's super nice. I love how they did her in the new movie. Movie, The hair. I I watched it with my grandma, and she said, oh, my gosh, I wish that she would have taken it out of the braid um, for the bowl. And then I watched it with my mom, and she said the exact same thing. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But it was really, uh, like, I love, I love the braid personally. And I liked how she also did it later i forgot what she did it for she changed it for something i can't remember but i i honestly love ella's hair but yeah and oh my gosh how they did it this time it's hilarious they made it into such a comedy like the mice the three mice props to them they're amazing um, Ella, she's really funny and quirky, and, like, she, everybody has, like, at least, like, one deep moment, and they're, like, who cares what anybody thinks? It's what you think, and, like, deep, and they, and they make it really funny, though. It's not, like, all right, we're gonna have a super, super deep, meaningful Cinderella. No, we've already had 50,000 of those. Now we're gonna have a super comedy live action. I mean, they have live actions, but it's not really like um, Cinderella or the new Cinderella. Um, so I really like the retelling and how they did it as a comedy. It's really funny. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Bye. Hi, y'all. It's me, Wendy, everybody's favorite mom influencer. I wanted to share a little tip that I have because we are out of summer and it is time to stock up for next June. Don't think about it in April. Think about it now because <laughs> you've got the time. So, and this is when all the things go on sale from the summer. Okay. Am I right? Okay. This is, I'm just giving out nuggets. This is my favorite book to read to the children before we go on vacation. Even if they're 18, they love it. They love when you read books to them. Kids, they love it. The children love it. Okay, this is called A Day at the Seashore. I'm going to read it to y'all so you know how to read a book to your children. You can write me a note and say thank you for teaching you how to do this. Okay, it's a good thing I'm here. It's a good thing I'm here. All right, this is by Catherine and Byron Jackson. Nobody knows them, y'all. Nobody knows them. Nancy and Timmy hop out of their beds as early as early can be. They put on their sun suits. Now, this is a moment where you could pause and talk to your kids about what a sun suit is. All right, so that's just a tip. That's just a little, you guys might want to take notes. All right, and hurry downstairs and eat breakfast in one, two, three, okay? They're just, they're just speedy. These kids are just speedy. What's in the basket? Good things to eat. And the bag's full of bathing suits folded and neat. Now, this is also a very good point, everybody. When you are going to the beach, you should fold all the things, okay? Because nobody wants crumpily bathing suits and crumpily towels. That's just not attractive, okay? So don't be those people. Don't be those people. Now, Nancy and Timmy are ready to go where, barks the pup. He doesn't know that you ride on a bus. Now, I thought that was going to rhyme. I did. I, it's not. It, it doesn't always rhyme, and that's okay. The children will love this. And, and when, you're, when you're yelling at I mean, when you're kindly asking them to pack their bags, okay, this will motivate them. This will motivate them. They will understand what it is that you're doing as a family. They will. You know, I'm just going to skip a couple of the pages. Look, they show up. They bring the dog. All right? You can read it. It's not that hard of a book. Oh, here's where they tell you what you can do in the beach. So when the kids say, Mom, I don't want to go to the beach. It's so boring. And I say, you know what? There's lots of kids that would love to go to the beach. <laughs> okay? Like this little kid. And she says, you can dig in the sand and build castles 
and dams. Okay. And that's okay to say that word, y'all. That's okay to say that word because we are not talking about taking, you know, like any bad words. Like nobody needs to go to confession after reading this book. Okay. We're talking about the, um, we're, you know, dams, you know, the, 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 the Hoover kind. Okay. The Hoover kind. Okay. So it's all right. Your kids are going to laugh. They're going to think that's great. Okay. You can catch little crabs if you're quick, okay? Nobody wants crabs on their beach day, but it's fine. It's going to be okay, okay? We're talking about we're talking about all these fun things you can do at the beach, y'all. So you can draw a great big picture right on the beach with a piece of shell or stick. Look at all these tips. When your kid says, Mom, I need some really expensive things to go dig in the sand, you say... Nancy and Timmy did it. They didn't need it. They had a shell and a stick, okay? This is why I read this to my kids. This is why. So that they know my expectations for what our vacation is going to be. All right. You can wiggle your toes in the cool little waves. I just want to say something, everybody. This is not what Galveston looks like, okay? I live, I, this is not at all. This is, but that's fine. We can just, we're going to pretend, okay? You can swim by yourself if you're brave. Also, if you're 12, I don't let anybody swim without floaties until they're 12. Okay. Am I wrong? I feel like that's a very good age. Okay. I'm just putting it out there. You can stay near the edge and hold tight to the rope and get used to the splash of the sea. <laughs> this is just such a sweet little book. It's just so sweet. And it gets everybody all ready. <laughs> you know, I just, I just can't wait and I can't turn the page. Okay. But it's fine. And here's the best part. And when mother calls, lunch time, you're hungry as bears, okay? Mine are. I mean, let's be real. My 18-year-old, seven sandwiches. I, I promise I wouldn't tell that story. It's fine, you guys. He's a big boy. He's growing up strong. Bow wow, barks the puppy. A treat. And Nancy and Timmy sit down on the sand and they eat and they eat and they eat. And that's it. That's how it ends. Isn't that great? Now I skipped a couple of the pages, uh, but this is a classic and I just, I feel like it will just change your lives. You guys, this has been Wendy, the mom influencer. Y'all have a good day and a great vacation. You guys, welcome back to It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. I hope this kind of inspires you guys to kind of go back into all things childhood and creative. It was really fun to listen to Anthony and all the things that he's doing and to kind of encourage us to step outside of our zone a little bit. And uh, also to think about when you're reading to your kids and what you're going to be doing this holiday season. Here's where I want to push supporting people like Anthony, supporting people who are writing, who are doing things outside the box, who are doing something a little bit extraordinary with their lives. Uh, that is something that we're going to have to touch back with him and ask him because I did not ask him my famous questions. So you know what that means? That means we got to come back and have him back here and we got to talk to him then and ask him my famous question. Uh, but until then, you guys can answer it for yourselves, okay? And I want you to think about that. When and how do you give yourself permission to be extraordinary? And that's what I want you to go into this whole holiday season uh, thinking about and wanting and desiring. So you guys, make sure you're following Anthony, that you are checking out his work. Please like and subscribe this show. Please share it. It really makes a big difference. Please share on Instagram, Facebook, all the things. Let your friends know about the show because we're really trying to do something different in the world. So this is my little plea to say, if you like what we're doing and you appreciate it, help a girl out. That would be fantastic. And you can also leave reviews. That would be also wonderful. Subscribe anyway, even if you don't listen. Okay, let's be honest. Um, and be a part of the show. There's a lot of forms on the show, a lot of things asking you guys to participate and be a part of this. If you're wanting to send in videos and clips, we want them. So you guys, thank you on 1350. Thank you on Veritas. Thank you, podcast. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Facebook. Everybody, Taylor, Anna, Jen, thank you so much for tuning into It's Not That Late with Liv Harrison. See y'all.